All right, we're out here to test the Garmin Bounce with my son Cash. Cash, you ready for this? Yeah. Wait, let's walk and when we get to that tree, we'll, we'll do a full on sprint for the rest. Two, one. All right, what'd you get for distance? Um, 0 0.90. 0 0.90? Uh-huh. Today, we're gonna to be taking a close look at the brand new Garmin Bounce. And no, it doesn't actually bounce. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Dave from Chase the Summit, and this is the brand new Garmin Bounce. The Garmin Bounce is a little bit different kind of product for this channel. This is not a pro athlete watch. This is not a uh, in-depth GPS tracking piece of technology. This is a children's watch. However, before you click away from this video, if you don't have kids or you're not interested, I promise you the Garmin Bounce is going to play a pivotal role in a lot of future wearables we see from Garmin. So in this video today, it will be a little bit different. I do want to go through all the features of the Garmin Bounce, the hardware, the form factor, the weight, the user interface, all the features on the watch, and what it's like to use with your kids with the Garmin Junior app on your phone. We're gonna cover all of that. And near the end of this video, we're also gonna talk about some of the features that I'd like to see ported over from the Garmin Bounce to more expensive Garmin wearables, like the Garmin Epix Gen 2, the Phoenix 7, the Forerunner line, all of them should get this technology eventually, I hope. When it comes to picking up a Garmin Bounce, there are a few options available. I've got the green burst version here but there's also a lilac floral that's kind of a pink color and there's also a black camo color and all these options come in at $149 here in the USA. $149 is pretty affordable and it's right in line with a lot of other children's watches out there like the LG Gizmo gadget that my son used to use that was right around the same price tag. However, there is an additional subscription fee. When it comes to Garmin and their LTE wearables like the Garmin Bounce, they handle it a little little bit differently. Like if you go out and buy an Apple Watch or an LG Watch or something like that, there's always, always the option to add it to your monthly plan on your phone. So for me, I have Verizon. If I have an Apple Watch, I can add it to my plan for around five bucks. And then I share the same plan between my watch and my phone, which is great. Now, when it comes to Garmin, they take a different approach where they want to just be completely independent and have their own infrastructure and platform. So you don't actually add the Garmin Bounce to your existing cell phone plan. Instead, you start a new plan with Garmin directly. The way this works has some pros and cons. Like I said, the pro is you don't actually have to have a cell phone plan from any other provider in order to get a Garmin Bounce and activate it because it all goes through Garmin. Now the con is that it's a little bit more expensive. The Garmin Bounce subscription plan comes in at $9.99 a month. That's about $10 a month here in the USA. However, if you do prepay for one year, you can get it down to $100 a year, which is about $8.33 a month, which is pretty affordable. With all that LTE jib jab out of the way, let's take a look at the actual hardware of the Garmin Bounce. As you can see here, this is a square watch. It does have a sort of simplistic Apple Watch look to it. The entire case is made out of plastic. It does have a little bit of a raised bezel here to protect the display, and then the back of the watch is entirely made out of plastic. The Garmin Bounce comes in at 42 millimeters square, and it's about 12 and a half millimeters thick, which is actually pretty big. So if you've Take a look at my Garmin Epix Gen 2 I have here. Uh, you can see that the Garmin Bounce and the Epix Gen 2 are almost similar in size. This is a pretty chunky watch for an adult. This watch is designed for kids, so as you can imagine, when it is on a kid's wrist, it does look a little chunky. However, my 10-year-old doesn't seem to mind wearing it. It does get out of the way, and it's pretty light coming in at just 37 grams. Another nice feature about the Garmin Bounce is that it is actually waterproof, which isn't always the case with kids' watches. I don't get why, because kids, you know? Uh, this watch is waterproof down to five atmospheres, which means kids can go swimming with it, they can jump in the pool, they can take a bath with it, they can shower with it. It's not a big deal, you will be protected. Now, if I flip the Garmin Bounce over, you will notice a couple of things. This watch does not have an optical heart rate sensor, which is kind of a bummer, but I do understand why they did that. 
when you're, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old, you don't really need to worry about your heart rate. It's not a metric you really need to keep track of. However, I think it would have been cool to add that for, you know, the adult's information, maybe for sleep tracking or something like that. Another thing to note on the back of the Garmin Bounce is the charging port. This is the same charging connector as any Garmin wearable made to date. So that could be the Epix Gen 2, the Forerunner 945, the Forerunner 255. They all use the same charging cable, including the Garmin Bounce, which is great. So if you're the parent, like for me, my wife and I both have Garmin watches. So we've got plenty of these cables kicking around and he can plug in and charge his watch up whenever he needs to. When it comes to battery life on the Garmin Bounce, Garmin claims about two days of use, which does seem accurate. However, that does vary depending what features you're using. If your kid's recording a run all day or if you're using the live track function, it will kill the battery a lot quicker. But in our use case, in our family, we're getting about two days pretty consistently. Okay, now let's talk about the setup process and what it's actually like to interact with the Garmin Bounce from the parent's phone. Uh, to do this, you're gonna need to download an app called Garmin Junior. This is available on iPhone. I'm using mine on an iPhone right now, but it's also available on Android as well. It doesn't really matter what phone you have. It seems to work on any device. So as you can see here, I've already got one kid set up. That's my son, Cash, but I can go ahead and click new kid. And as you can see, you can fill in all of their information, like their photo, you can change their name, their bedtime, their wake time, their birthday, their their gender, etc., and then you can add a secondary device to your Garmin Junior account. Now, the Garmin Junior account can have multiple kids in here, which is great because there's other benefits to having more than one of these devices as well, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Once you've got the Garmin Bounce all configured and set up, you'll be able to see your kids on the home screen on the Garmin Junior app, as you can see here. I've only got one bounce set up here, so I've got my son Cash. I gave him a shark icon because why not? And as you can see, it shows all of his information for the the day. So I've got his activity, his chores, which we'll talk about in a minute, and any of his recent activities that he's recorded with the watch. If I click in on his name, I'm able to go to his profile where I can dive deeper into any of these metrics. He has not been wearing the Garmin Bounce today, so you can see that there's no active time. But if I swipe back, you can see a day where he was pretty active. This was a couple of days ago when he went back to school. Uh, he's got a couple of activities recorded here. He's got 88 active minutes. And if I scroll down, I could see any of his runs or in this case, a walk that he did in our town for over a mile. And the cool thing about the Garmin Junior app is that you can actually see trends over time. As you can see here, you can see the active minutes and timed activities over the past seven days and any recent activities below that. The Garmin Junior app will also record your kid's step count. So you can see here, he's got almost 10,000 steps for the day, which is easy for him. He's bouncing off the walls mainly throughout the day. And if I scroll back, 14,000 steps, 6,000 steps, so on and so forth. And below that on the graph, you can see any activities he did during that time and when he woke up and went to sleep during that day. And in terms of sleep tracking, you can see here, it's pretty interesting because I've never tracked my kid's sleep before. I had no idea that he slept for almost 10 hours a day. What a lucky kid he is. I do not get even remotely close to that myself. However, you can see that on this day he went to bed at 8 30 and he woke up at 6 46 and i would say that's pretty accurate within the garmin junior app you can also see stats and here's like the best active minutes in a day or your best step count in a day in this case on christmas day he walked uh, 15,000 steps which i'm not surprised about. Within the Garmin Junior app, you can also set up chores and rewards, which is really interesting, but I haven't really leveraged this a lot. I tried to set it up, but it was a little bit confusing for him to figure out. Basically, if I click on awards here, I can go in and I've only got one award set up. So that would be allowance. So here I've set up allowance. It's worth four coins and it says it's worth $1 if he completes this. So I don't know what to do with this, but basically you could go in and add a different one for like uh, fold your clothes or do this or do that. And then you can set uh, the price of that in coins, which are, you know, virtual coins. And then he can redeem those when he completes the activity that he's supposed to do. Okay, now that we've talked about the dashboard, the activity tracking, sleep tracking, and things like that, let's jump over to the location tab. Now the location tab will share the location of the watch in real time, wherever it is. And this can be done using the Wi-Fi connection, like I said, if that's configured, or it will default back to the cellular connection, so you don't need to 
be near your phone or near a Wi-Fi source, this will always work. So this is super interesting. So the watch will automatically update its location throughout the day without the kid doing anything. So you can track where they are, if they're on the bus, if they made it to school, if they made it to their grandparents' house, etc. On top of that, you can set up boundary locations. So when the watch enters that boundary, it will send your phone a notification. For example, I've set one up for our house. So when my kids get off the bus and he gets home, I'll get a no notification on my phone saying that my kid got home. I also set up boundaries for the grandparents' house, his school, so I know when the bus got to school, and all kinds of different locations, and these work really good. The boundary notifications happen almost instantly. I feel like while the car is pulling into the driveway when we get home, I get a notification on my watch and on my phone saying that he's arrived at home. It's very quick. So the boundaries and the location sharing and notifications work great. I have zero complaints there. And there's another feature that's really interesting about this watch. If you look at the bottom right of my screen here, there's a feature called Live Track. And if you're a Garmin user like me and you've got a Garmin Epix Gen 2 or a Forerunner watch or something like that, you already know where Live Track is. This allows you to share your location, your pace, your distance, etc., with somebody that you want to know where you are. That could be your friends and family, maybe you're in a race environment or something like that. Uh, you can share your location in real time and it's updated every one second so they know exactly where you are. Now the Garmin Bounce has something similar to that where if you click on this live track button, it'll actually remotely enable live tracking on the Garmin Bounce without my kid even knowing it. Now why would I want to enable live tracking on the Garmin Bounce when it already has location sharing? Well, for a couple of reasons. The standard location sharing on the Garmin Bounce only updates every 30 minutes to one hour. Now if you only want to update the location one time, you can click the refresh button on your phone or your kid can actually send a manual check-in to let you know where they are. But live tracking is totally different because it actually updates the location of the watch in real time every one second. I found this live tracking feature to be super valuable when my kid's on the bus on his way home. I know exactly when I need to be out at the bus stop because I can actually see him coming and it's been really nice. With location sharing out of the way, let's dive over to the connect tab. And this is pretty interesting. This is where you do all the two-way communication with the Garmin Bounce. But not only that, you can also send messages to family members. So at the top of the screen here, you can see I can tip click on family, and now you can see that I've got a message box for my family. So if I have my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, uncles, etc., all associated with this Garmin Bounce account, and I send a message here, they'll all get this message. The family chat will also work with multiple Garmin Bounce devices, so if all of my kids had Garmin Bounces, I'd be able to send them all the same message by typing it in here or recording a voice memo. And below the family chat, you can see I've got Cash, that's my oldest son, and in here is where I can directly communicate with him. He can send me messages from his watch, and I can send him messages from my phone, and we can go back and forth just like we're text messaging. So from the home screen on the watch, if I click this top button here, you can see that there's four icons and we have that same connect icon here. And if I click on that icon, we've got contacts, check in and get help. Now, Contacts will bring me to contacts, obviously. Check-in will send a manual check-in of my location of the watch to my parents' phones. And then at the bottom here, get help will trigger an emergency contact. So this will send a message to all of the members that are associated with the Garmin Junior app, and it will start a live track so people know where I am if I do trigger that emergency button. So if I go ahead and click on my name here as if I was sending dad a message, there's a couple of options here. So there's the red icon that's a voice memo. Uh, and then on the right here, there's a blue icon for other messages. So this is for emojis. There's another set of emojis here that actually make sounds. And then on the right here, there's some pre-configured messages that you can set up in the app. So I've got okay, yes, no, I love you, thanks. Uh, where are you? Please come get me, etc. A bunch of the usual things that you'd wanna say in a hurry. He can just click on this. Like I can say I'm ready and click send and that'll be sent over to my phone. And you can see how quick that is because it's already shown up on my watch and it's already shown up on my phone, which is pretty cool. And if you didn't want to go in and send a text message, you can click on the little microphone icon and you can see here it says tap to record where I can say, hey dad, please come pick me up. I'm at the bus stop or something like that. Now when I click send, it should be sent over to my phone and we can see how long that takes. Uh, it's already happened. So there's Cash sent an audio message. Hey dad, please come pick me up. I'm at the bus stop or something like that. So the audio quality is pretty good. It's not amazing. It's definitely not like you're recording into 
one of these fancy microphones I have here in the studio, but it's perfectly legible and I have no issues hearing what he's trying to say to me. Okay, now that we've talked about location sharing and messaging and all the things, let's talk about the last tab in the Garmin Junior app, and that's going to be the Challenges tab. The Challenges tab is a lot of fun. As you can see here, there's a daily step count option, and then there's a weekly step count option. If I dive into the daily step count, this will actually aggregate all of our data. So because my wife and I are both Garmin users and we both use Garmin Connect, all of our step count throughout the day is recorded and synced over to the Garmin Junior app. So you can see here, I've got 25,000 steps, my wife has 18,000 steps, and my son only has 2,600 because he hasn't worn it today because I had to borrow it to make this video, so that makes sense. But on a different day, if he found that he was in last place on the step competition, it would motivate him to get outside, go for a walk, run around the room, take a bike ride, something like that, and it actually does work. Okay, now that we've walked through the Garmin Junior app and how it works with the watch, let's take a closer look at the watch itself and the user interface. So this watch does have two buttons. You've got a select button and then a back button on the right here, and then the screen itself is touchscreen on obviously. So from the home screen, you've got a standard watch face. This is fully customizable. There's a bunch of fun ones in here that you can select from. You can also add your own picture as a background to the watch face. And if you go ahead and swipe down from the top, you go into sort of a quick selection menu where you can do various things. From the home screen or watch face on the Garmin Bounce, I can swipe left or right to start going through the various widgets. So if I swipe to the right, you can see that there's a widget for all of my messages that are coming in from my family. Swiping over again, I've got my active minutes for the day. Swiping over again, I've got my step count for the day. Swiping over again, I've got my chores like I had shown you in the app. Swiping over one more time brings us to the daily step challenge. And like I said, this is updated in real time throughout the day. So you can see here the same information that I just showed you in the Garmin Junior app. Swiping over one more time brings us to the stats page. And this is kind of a summary of all of the things the watch is collecting. And then swiping over one more time brings us to the weather widget, which is really nice actually. It shows the current weather at the top here being 39 degrees, and scrolling down gives me a forecast of upcoming hours. If I go ahead and click this top button, I get a few more options. So on the top left here is the messaging screen, which we already talked about. To the right of that is this shoe. And this is where the Garmin Bounce differs from a lot of other children's watches. Because if I dive into this, it shows activities. So I've got run, walk, bike, and pool swim, and other. The interesting thing about the Garmin Bounce is that it actually has a GPS chip built into it. That's used for both location sharing, or in this case, for activity tracking. So my son can actually go for a run with his Garmin Bounce and record the activity, get his pace, his distance, and all of that information synced over to Garmin Junior so he can view it after the fact. And it's been really fun to experiment with this a little bit. You can see here, I've got the basic stats. I've got my timer and my distance. And if I look at my watch here, you can see that it already told me that my son has started an activity on his watch. It's that quick. However, there are some shortcomings when it comes to the Garmin Junior app and activity tracking. I could see an issue where if you're an older kid and you're growing out of the Garmin Bounce and you want a grown-up watch like the Garmin Epix Gen 2 or a Forerunner or something like that, there's no way to transfer your data from the Garmin Junior app over to a real Garmin Connect account. And with activity tracking out of the way, let's talk about GPS accuracy because I feel like I should mention it. It's not really that important for a kid's watch to have a, like really good GPS accuracy, but with this watch, you are leveraging the GPS chip for both location sharing for safety and for tracking activities. So I do feel it is something worth talking about. So my son and I have gone on a few runs with the Garmin Bounce and compared it with the Garmin Epix Gen 2 and another watch that I have, which is the Amazfit GTR4. In comparing all the tracks side by side, I think the Garmin Bounce actually does a pretty decent job in terms of GPS accuracy. As you can see, there's no wild lines going all over the place. There's not a lot of drift in the numbers line up pretty favorably with the Garmin Epix Gen 2. Now, I want to talk about why the Garmin Bounce is so important for the Garmin ecosystem as a whole and why I think this is going to change the landscape for Garmin in the next couple of years. And that's going to be the LTE connection. I really think this is new technology. It's groundbreaking. This is something they've never done before. 
Other than the Garmin Foreigner 945 LTE, which came out a couple of years ago, that watch had LTE, but it didn't give you the option to do like fun, casual messaging back and forth or voice messaging or just recreational location sharing. Everything about the 945 LTE was more focused on safety and emergency functions where the Garmin Bounce is made for fun and for communication and for safety and emergency. What I'm trying to say here is imagine if you took the Garmin Bounce and took its LTE functionality and sort of smushed it into your Garmin Epix Gen 2 or Phoenix 7 or Foreigner 955 and gave them all of that functionality so you could go out on a run and share your location in real time from your watch without bringing your phone with you. You could send them voice messages by talking into your phone. All that functionality in these high-end watch watches would be really cool. And I have a feeling the fact that the Garmin Bounce exists the fact that they've set up the infrastructure for the subscriptions and the yearly fee and all of that, that it's only a matter of time before we see this kind of functionality in these more expensive, more adult watches. And on top of that, imagine a day where you could stream Spotify or Amazon Music directly to your watch without having to pre-download it from Wi-Fi or anything like that, just being anywhere. That would be really cool. Like I said though, this is pure speculation. I have no insider knowledge. I'm just guessing and having fun with it. I'm just betting that if I was a betting man, that we're gonna see this kind of technology on a Garmin wearable in the near future within the next couple of years. That's all I'm saying here. And with that, we have made it to the end of this video about the Garmin Bounce and what I think about it so far. If you found this video fun, interesting, anything useful, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helped me out. Also, I'd love to hear from you on what you think about the Garmin Bounce, if you're gonna get one for your kid, if you're excited about this new technology coming to future Garmins, let me know all of that in the comments down below because I would love to hear from you. And finally, if you're planning on picking up a Garmin Bounce or any Garmin watches for that matter, I'll have a bunch linked it down in the description down below and those links do help support my channel. So you might as well use them. And with that, we are done here. We're finally done. I gotta go now. I'll see you next time. Bye.